Good morning and thanks for staying with us and welcome to PLOS TV Africa News of the Press where we get into the major headlines making the news in our national dailies and we're going to in-depth analysis and review of those headlines and joining me this morning on of the press is Anihu V. Ayeni, a social commentator. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. And thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to the headlines this morning. Let's start off quickly with the Nation newspaper and news making the headlines in the Nation newspaper this morning. INEC may opt for re e-resorts transmission agency on consultation and sale of UTME forms begins today and that you find on page 11 in the Nation newspaper. CBN defends Nara with $16.5 billion in 12 months and $8.3 billion Nara in future market. Experts caution federal government on $30 billion loan plan. And on security operation on Motec on legal says Sage Ekiti lawyers and Police lack adequate men. Outfit, not our military wing, OPC declares. Abiodun to receive Ishtiaka Baduru orders into APC. And made kills baby, you can find that in page 5 in the Nation newspaper. Anxiety as Apex Court considers seven governors fate. And also in the Nation newspaper, NDDC begins audit of contracts in oil producing states. Oshodi Abulegba BRT Lane ready in May, says Samolu. So I don't know which picks your interest this morning in the Nation newspaper, and so we could just start off with that. The sale of the UTME forms. Okay, great. And the, because of the issues of the NIN, yes. that, that is, uh, you hear things like it's been drawn, it's been withdrawn, it's been stopped, it's no longer going on. The registration for NIN, NIN is still going on. However, the use of the N but NIN they've said to that include hamper, it. That will not hamper anything. That's what they've come to, they said that sometime last week. Yeah, it will yeah. not hamper, yeah. but the use, but b before then, yes. they had said that it was going to be, you will need it yes. for bank transactions, for, and, um, for tax issues and everything, but they've now suspended that, that, uh, that uh, effect. Yes. And what they are now saying is that the registration goes on, however, it will not hamper anything else that they are going to, to do, do going forward. All right. Now, what, what's your take on, the, on UTME as it is? Do you still see it as a valid means for people to get into our tertiary institutions? Many have argued the fact that, you know what I mean, that the standard is dropped, um, cutoff is nowhere used to be. Like my days, you, you had to hit as much as 300 and something yes. for you to get into university. Okay. And so many people now, they're, they're casting aspersions and doubts on the credibility of the UTME as a means of entrance into our tertiary institutions. What's your reaction to that, though? My reaction to it is looking at it from two angles. Okay. From the angle of those who benefit from it and from the angle of how we have become comfortable with the system and unwilling to change. What are the many factors in this? To, uh, to tell you the truth, yeah. some people, all they know is go to school. The next thing they know is to do JAMB, is to do YX, yes. so that they can get into university. Now, for that system to change, that they're not going to do something else to require them to go into the university, is not just about stopping this alone. Okay. It's a whole, as they call it, the whole value chain. It's the whole chain. You've got to start something to be able to pull this out. Because then what is going to become the criteria to enter into the universities? Unfortunately, is a convolution of, of series of things that have erupted yes. from the fact that there has not been proper monitoring for a number of years. There was a time it was effective. Yes. But now the th things have changed. And I think the Ministry of Education needs to revalue the use in the present system, in the present knowledge environment that we, that we in, live yes. that we live in. So it's not just to say that, no, it should be thrown out and everything. Before, when it is thrown out, what happens? Before it is thrown out, what is the system going forward? Because there's still the issue of going to school from when you're young until when you get about 25 or so, do NYSE and then start to work. And, and does this call for a total reform of our educational system as it is right now? It, it does. It does, but yeah. the thing about education is that there are people still getting educated okay. and in different ways. Okay. I see primary formal, school children. Formal education? Formal and, formal and informal. Formal, okay. formal and informal. There's, there's, I see primary school children these days who are able to do, who are able to put um, science projects together by themselves, who are able to make this and make that by watching their parents, by watching older people. So what, what needs to change in the government is the perception that the trajectory that we have used for so many years is still what works. That trajectory has changed. So that is what I think the administration of that is what needs to change okay. so that people, they can put more resources into the alternative ways that people are learning for effectiveness. 
because they are being effective with what they are learning. Okay. If these children have a forum where they know once I do this, I can go there, then that is still a form of education. Oh, right, let's go straight to the Punch newspaper this morning. Headlines in the Punch newspaper. Panel probes 14.3 billion naira Nebza phone in private account. TCN to push for Disco's recapitalization. That is on page 30 in the Punch newspaper. 11 airlines and active fail to renew licenses. And that's on page 29. Irek Bishola blames porous borders for arms proliferation, illegal aliens. Carry illegal arms, be arrested, police warn OPC hunters. Anambra in Nugu defunds Southeast security outfits and South South delay project. Southeast governors Ohanese should be ashamed, says IPOB. Hmm. An escort second labor equity reach agreement strikes suspended staff. Cobbler rapes graduate, shares nude video with friends. And lastly, in the Punch newspaper, Ogun ex deputy governor, former PDP chair secretary, joined the APC. Let me, let me have your take on. Um, Operation Amotekun. Now, there seems to be a whole lot of hula baloo about it right now. Yes. Expressions of concerns of what this might turn into. What's your reaction to, firstly, the setup of um, the security outfit Amotekun? We have always grown up with vigilante groups. Yeah. The Yorubas have a history of having vigilantes in one form or the other. And then after, um, and so in, for a number of years now, it has always been what the government, the government system of protection of the people. Unfortunately, because of the, 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 the violence that has erupted within the societies, yes. that is why these people have come together to say we are going to defend our territories, we'll defend our people, we'll defend it. Now that it has come up, and Amotekun actually means leopard, and if you look at the characteristics of a leopard, they are very gentle. However, they are very defiant and yeah. they, are, uh, you know, they are cruel when it comes to defense. And so that's what they are saying, that we are, not going to, we are not going to be aggressive about it. We'll be very gentle. We'll be subtle. We'll learn. However, if it comes to our territory, we will defend it. What's my take on it? I think it's timely for them to do that. My take is they should please do the administration very well so that they say what they have said they, have, they will do and let that not go, get out of hand. Because they say absolute power corrupts absolutely. You yes. give a man a, a gun and then he goes haywire. There should be discipline. Yeah. And then when the government is now saying that you carry legal weapons, they have asked them to use only Dane guns, not proper guns. So it's not like they have been given a free for all to shoot and kill and, and do all that. They've been told to use Dane guns only and not uh, proper guns. And they have, lawyers have asked them to really draw out what is the system? What did you really need to show us? What exactly, how you are going to implement it? Yes. And that's something that they need to do. Once they're able to do that, so that people can have confidence and they can feel relaxed without thinking that another militancy is rising up. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's all about reposing confidence in the people. In the people. Now, my, my concern about um, this operation is who controls, who regulates the activities? Exactly. How do we ensure there's no duplicity of effort between what Amotoku stands for and the Nigerian police? Yes. You know, so this concerns are many people expressing it and how we also show at the end of the day they will not be politicized where you have political figures using them for their own selfish agenda. agenda. Now, what should be put in place to ensure this doesn't happen? Because there's a tendency, it might, if not properly checked. Controls. Controls. Who, from, does, who does this control? Who does the control? Yeah. Controls from the federal government. Okay. From the federal government. Yes. Why, the reason why I say the federal government is because one of the, the people championing this are the state governors. Yes. The state governors of the Yoruba states. The southwest states. The southwest states, states yes. to say it like that. However, if the federal government tells them this is only your boundary, you cannot go this far then they know they, they have checks and balances on what they can and cannot do. But not just giving them room, free room to do whatever they want. And that's the reason why the MBA is asking them that we need to see what your process is. We need to see what backings, what your legal backings are for what you want to do. What are you doing from point A to point B? So you are not giving, you are not giving um, people who are not trained loose guns to yes. carry up and down the place. Let's put on power a little bit. Now, the TCN is pushing for Disco's recapitalization. Yes. Did you see this solving anything at all? Unfortunately, uh, there are two, there are different, there are different criteria of this matter. Yes. There are those who know the financial implication. There are those who know the technical. As far as I'm concerned, at a, at a power conference that I was in, I told them, I said, for me, as a person, 
My own is, when I put on the light, let me see light in my because house. I was just going to say that all Nigerians <laughs> are concerned about is, let me, let have, me light. have light. Yes. What does it take for me to have light? Now, recapitalization is the fact that the, the, there's, there's always this feedback that despite all the money that has been pumped into the system, yes. they have still not seen any um, improvement. Imp improvement in it. They've not seen improvement. Even the administrators are complaining that look, the system is too, the system is too tight. We are not able to get money from what we are doing. We are not able to distribute them properly. There are too many stakeholders that are disrupting the system. There are too many, and unfortunately, it all comes down to all this corruption thing yes. of because the guy is supposed to take care of 10 houses, but because they have been talked to by somebody, somebody, they are only concentrating on two. Or, and so this other environment is suffering. The administration of all these things, like I said, there are many layers of all these stories. Yeah. And so it depends on where you're looking at it from. But what I think the government, the part the government should do is that, what does it take for them to deliver that 24 seven power to the Nigerian of you and I, that when we put on our light, is it charging us more, charging us less, or do we need to reduce what we are taking now as in our power consumption yeah. system to make this Privatization. system improve? Privatization. Privatization because individuals can run faster than a group. Because they use the example <laughs> of our communication, um, um, what, what privatization did to our communication sector. I mean, it's given different players the opportunity to come in and play, and then everybody has a chance to subscribe to whatever network you want to. Do you think that could be another way for us to consider when we look at our power sector? Power is, a diff power is different. Why? Because of the chain of power. Okay. I, my father is an engineer. Okay. And some years ago, I asked him, I said, Daddy, what does it take to have power in Nigeria? My father told me, he said, look, my dear, the problem starts from the poles that we have on the streets. Okay. He said, none of our poles is standing at a 90 degree angle. He said, the poles are supposed to be there. The poles are either bent or they are fallen. Okay. And that shows you the credibility of the person who put the pole there. The supervisor who told him it was okay, and the manager who signed off in the office and said the job is done. So daddy told me, he said, for us to actually address the power, the, uh, the power issue, yes. you have got to address the whole administration of power from the beginning to the end. From those who are laying the, power, um, who are laying the wires down to laying the poles to those back in the office. Mm. So it, it's different with the telecom. You do, you lay your pipes, you, subscribers will come in and come and buy. Power is different. If you cannot have, if you cannot have the poles at the right angle, the transmission will be disrupted. And so it's not just one person; it's not just two people. Yeah. But 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 it's been. I think I think it precedes um, it precedes the Buhari administration. The, the need to generate 14 megawatts that will be in auto for quite a while now, and that has not still been achieved. What what is the bottleneck to that? I mean, the bottleneck to it is like is said in. Bear in mind country. that we have countries who were who are, who are feeding off our feeds and they enjoy 24 hour supply light. I mean, so why can't we, if we're, if we're feeding off other people, other people are feeding off our, <laughs> our power grid and they enjoy 24 hours of light, why uh, can't we? You, you know, when Kainji Dam was built, <laughs> yes. there were concessions okay. that when Kainji Dam was being built. Now, Kainji Dam is around borders of other, these countries that you're talking about. Okay. When it was going to be built, there were agreements reached that for us to be able to do this, we will give you this, we will give you that. Now, they have a system whereby what they are given, this is how they are using it. Whereby what you are given, this is how they are using it. Meanwhile, what we are generating, we have not synchronized our system in the right manner for receiving it. It's the, it's the principle of the poll that I told you okay. about. When you go to these countries, how is their power supply? Look at, go on their streets. How are their poles? Okay. How are, their, how are their poles, their power poles? How are they distributing the power when you go to all these countries? But Nigeria is a huge country, bigger than all that. We have not streamlined our system of administration of our power system, the engineering of it, the technicality of it. We've not done that. Is it a generation it's problem or a distribution problem? It is a generational problem. It's okay. a historical problem. It's a heritage problem that needs to be addressed from I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound vain, but yeah. let's address it from the root. Okay. There's a root problem that is creating all the surface that we see today. It's not just something as about just nepa no light. No, there's a root problem to it. All right.
Let's go ahead. We have this day with us this morning. The headlines in the Disney newspaper. Banks brace for CBN's fresh recapitalization plan. And federal government to replace ERPG with medium-term economic blueprint. And that's on page 8 in this day newspaper. 23 states run local security outfits as groups demand decentralized policing. Um, let's see, look at the back page this morning. Shaka Mamodu, a communist as hater in chief. That's an opinion piece yes. in a Disney newspaper. 23 states run local security outfits as groups demand decentralized policing. There's been a clamor for state policing. And I'm not come to say they're not necessarily that. that. And do, don't you think this is a time that Nigerian police should, um, the federal government and our, our, our policymakers should, should actually see that the bill for state policing come into be? Some years ago, yes. this question was asked to an inspector general of police, okay. and his response was this. If he goes to the U.S., sorry to use that as an example, but that's what he said. Yes. He said, if you go to the U.S., you go to New York, the, the citizen will tell you, I'm an American. You go to New Jersey, they will tell you, I'm an American. Yes. You go to California, you go everywhere, they will say, I'm an American. He said, but if you come into Nigeria... If you get to Lagos, you'll say I'm a Lagosian. If you go to Sokoto, you'll say I'm from Sokoto State. If you go to Kaduna, you'll say I'm from Kaduna State. They will not say I'm a Nigerian. They said that the reason why they have not embraced this state policing yeah. is because of division. There's a lot of division. And then there was a lot of mindset division. No, I'm from this state, I'm from that state. So no, this police is from my state. What happens if something is happening in Nogu State? Lagos State Police will not go. Hmm. What happens if something is happening way big, out of, out of hand in Kaduna State, Sokoto State? Lagos State Police will not go there, or Sokoto State Police will not come here. I'm not, I don't know how that will work with them. Okay. But however, that was what the IG of police said at that time. He said the reason why is because we have this um, cultural and traditional division system in Nigeria at that time. That was yeah. what he said. And so they want to revisit it now. Has, have things changed? Are we, more, are we more integrated into one another? Can we embrace the discipline of the Lagos, the state Policing. policing system? It now, that, there's an interesting um, news here. I just want us to bother a little bit. I'm just going to read uh, maybe the first paragraph. Now, the federal government is fine-tuning the process of putting in place a medium-term economic blueprint as a successor plan for the economic recovery and growth plan. That's the ERPG which runs its full course this year. There was so much that was said about the ERPG, mm -hmm. and it seemed like an interim palliative measure has been put in place. What does that say of the present administration? That they are making the efforts to do something about what <laughs> is going on in the country. Uh, that's, you, 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 you're, you're pretty positive. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm pretty, uh, well I, I say that because that is what, that's what they will say. That yes. is what everyone will say. That... One of the things that I see is a challenge to a number of things that the government have so many, so many goodwill to bring out to society is the administration of this. How many people are actually getting the benefit of this? Is it all or just a few? So if, when the government actually would want to release this, my take is, please, have a very, very robust administrative system of it. Let it be really, let it reach out to everybody yeah. and not just a few. I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a government optimist. You know, I'm an administrator by background. So That's good. <laughs> I like to be a government optimist. All right, let's take a look at the last daily we have with us this morning, and that's the Vanguard newspaper, the first headline in the Vanguard newspaper, how investors bought 19 trillion Nara treasury bills in 2019. Uh, it will be proactive to allow not retain power in 2023. And that's Falai coming from Falai. Insecurity, Northern Christian Elders, PFN, Bar Cooker against federal government. 50th anniversary of end of civil war and the Igbo question. 13,500 pay threatened operation Amotekun. The pay is poor. Hunters start with 50,000 Naira. Agbekoya, states yet to decide on remuneration, that's Dojumo, and Southwest Governor's Action Constitutional, says AKTM MBA, Amoteku, not military wing of OPC, R.A. Adams, and Ilea Rugbo, Quara PDP petitions the NHRC, use of presidential jet for private event by Buhari's family, illegal, says Falana, or Bayuwana. And also in the Vanguard newspaper, El Zazaki detention, your days of reckoning at hand, Shiites tell El Rufai. Niger Delta leaders won't intervene if militants end ceasefire, says Clark. And lastly in the Vanguard this morning, Lagos government goes tough on Okada Keke minutes.
Your cat and your cat. <laughs> your camera. They're, your they're, camera. Menace, they're menace in our roles. They're like flies. I mean, yes. That's what, that's what I actually call them. They're like, like flies. They just come, they just Honestly, come at you. <laughs> they prove. They come in droves, just like that. Okay, there's, there's, there's a whole lot brewing up in this <laughs> operation. I'm more tech cool. The pay is poor. Hunter stack with 50,000 naira. Come on, 13,000 um, naira for 13,500. What does that do to anybody? And Elza Zaki, what's your take on Elza Zaki? Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, they've allowed this to brew on for so many yeah. years. I remember when we were growing up and the issue first of all came on. The only thing we heard was the, the reason, the, the problem the, with the Shiites and the real Muslims was the way they pray. That when Muslims are praying, when they stand up, they put their hands down. But these people had come and they now said that when you finish, when you bow down, when you rise up, you put your hands crossed together. I don't want to say too much about that. But the thing is, unfortunately, it's something that has been allowed to fester. For, they've been around for 40 years. They have, they, have, um, they have presence in every state of the country. Yes. And so to manage it now is not, I don't think government should go on a top heavy, top heavy, top down system to manage it. I think they should try to have a more cohesive in, um, conversation kind of way to manage it. Calling the big wigs, those who are it's like the good, the bad, and the ugly oh, together. Yes. And then let's work on press because <clears throat> When you're speaking about something, it's very easy to be in, uh, to have a point of view. But when you step into the environment, when you step into the mindset thing it's that makes these game. people, it's a different ball game. Yeah. Now, what is that? Getting into that place to be able to look at your own positive and their own, and then reaching an agreement that look, this is only this is only, you can only go this far. You can only go this far. We can't let you do this because of this and because of that. And if this is what you want to do, this is how you can do it, this is how you can do it, this is how we will bring harmony. Because this way and this way is creating problems. In Abuja, you come out and you say you cannot go somewhere because they are demonstrating. Yes. You go to meetings and you can't come out again because people are shooting and killing. Real human beings are dying. Homes. All right, All right let, let's, let's, we, need, we need to wrap this up very quickly. Uh, you're a social commentator now. Olufala has come out and said that it to be provocative to allow North retain power come 2023. What, what's your take on that? And we have, remember, we also have the, um, the, the young side of the ROR Consultative Forum saying it's, it's the it's support their of power shifting to, to, the, to the Southwest come 2023. And Olufala is saying it will be provocative if power is retained in the North come 2023. Your, your thoughts on this? My thought on the fact of this is political. Yes. And I, I think uh, Pao Olu Falai, yeah. I mean, he's been there for a number of years. You see, there, there, there are times, there are instances where when it comes to political statements, people need to be careful of what we say so yeah. you don't send the wrong message. Now, what his, his own story from where, just like what we were saying, when you look at it from that person's own perspective, there must be a reason why, why? this. Yeah. Olufalaya has a greater history of Nigeria and governance than you and I. He's been there. He's been in government. Mm -hmm. They know what they see in government, maybe because of what is happening with uh, the president and everything now. So the next thing should come to the south. However, there is also a southerner there in Asurok, and he's also, I mean, there most of the time and also making decisions. The thing is, we, like we said with the NEPA issue, we want governance in Nigeria. We want a system of administration that works. We want to see that Nigeria is moving towards a real nation building, not just project stop, project stop, yeah. not just political yeah. matters of withdrawing what is good for the nation just because a political party does not like it. We want to see real consistent governance. So I'm sorry, my own take will be, it's not a matter of north, south, east or west. Let it not, let it not be, I'd rather say that. Let it not be a matter of north, south, east or west. Let it be a matter of real governance that we need in Nigeria. Social commentator Anuhi Viayani, thank you for your in-depth analysis and contribution to Off the Press this thank morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Man. And that's all we can take this morning on Off the Press. Do join us again same time tomorrow for Off the Press. I am Benny Ark and this is Plus TV Africa. Stay with us.